And today we're going to be wrapping up the series uh, that we've been talking about, Surviving the Storms of Life. Now, all of us, without exception, face storms, okay? Can I get an amen right there? You know what I'm talking about. All of us face storms. We all uh, face difficulty. That's a part of life. But what do you do to survive the storm? And we've talked about how God uses storms in your life. And we've talked about today, we're going to talk about how God will use storms to help other people. You see, God will not waste your pain. I want you to let that sink in. God will not waste your pain if you'll trust Him. And often, uh, we go through things, and uh, that in turn allows us to help other people. Well, today, I'm going to tell you briefly the story of Joseph. And uh, if you've been in church for very long, you know about Joseph. He was one of the sons of Israel. He was not the oldest, but he was given the privilege. You remember the story about the coat of many colors? All right, that was indicating that he was going to be the royal member of the family, uh, the leader of that family. And And that was normally reserved for the oldest son. But of course, Uh, Joseph had uh, his father's blessing. And so even as a young man, Joseph dreamed dreams. As a 17-year-old, he had a dream. In fact, he had a couple dreams. He had a dream about that uh, the, the moon and the stars bowed down to him. He shared that with his brothers. He shared that with his parents. And they were like, what? And then he had another dream, and it was about the, uh, uh, that the sheaves bowed down to his sheaf and that um, it was really interesting because they were not very accepting of this. But of course, his father, it says this about him, that he pondered these things in his heart. Now, what we do know is that these dreams were from God. God was preparing him for something greater, only 17 years old. Well, his brothers, of course, they got very upset with him. And then one day they kidnapped him, threw him in a pit, and they sold him into slavery. He was sold into slavery in Egypt. He ended up in a man named Potiphar's house. And Potiphar was a very powerful and influential man in Egypt. And so Joseph began to serve him. He had been ripped away from his family. He had been put in a foreign land. He had lost his home. He was only 17 when this happened. But he began to be faithful even when he was in difficult circumstances. Well, the long story short, uh, uh, Potiphar really began to trust him. Uh, Joseph had great integrity even though he was in difficult circumstances. And so what happened was eventually Potiphar put him over his whole house, his whole household. But Potiphar's wife got eyes for Joseph. We'll call her Potiphar, all right? She was very, uh, very much after Joseph, but he kept his integrity. He would not give in to the temptation. Well, as you've read the story, you know that uh, Potiphar's wife set him up. She accused him falsely of sexual assault. Now, did Joseph do this? No. She lied about him. And as a result of that, he went from slavery to prison. It went from bad to worse. Now, think about this. And if you read the story, it says of Joseph that he kept his integrity. It says of Joseph, some of the most astounding words in the Old Testament to me, It says that when Joseph, he had been enslaved, and now he was in prison, but here's what the Bible says about him. The Lord was with him. The Lord was with him. And I want you to know that even in the middle of your storm, God does not abandon you. Even in the middle of your difficulty, God is with you. And what the rest of that sentence and that verse says is this. 
and the favor of the Lord was upon him. Now, most of the time when we think of favor, we think about a life of ease. We think about having lots of money. We think about having no problems. Our health is good. Our children are good. Uh, Our job is good. We got money in the bank. That would be the favor of the Lord, in our opinion. But I got to tell you that that's not always the case. You can have God's favor on your life and yet be going through difficult times. You can have God's favor on your life and yet be going through a storm. So problems, having problems, that is not an indicator of God not giving you favor. Joseph was taken from his family. He was taken from his country. He was sold into slavery. They were going to kill him, but they decided to sell him into slavery instead. He was falsely accused, think about this, of sexual assault. I mean, goes to his very integrity. And then he was in prison. And yet, the Bible says, the Lord was with him, and God's favor was on him. And so, Joseph, as the story goes, he began to languish there in the prison. But he then even became a trusted person there in that prison. And one day you know that the, uh, the butler and the baker of, of Pharaoh were thrown into prison. And um, Joseph interpreted dreams for them. And of course, one was executed the, in just a few days And the other was restored to his position. And Joseph said to him, the one that was restored to his position, don't forget about me. Bring my case to Pharaoh. And of course, he forgot all about him. And we find it interesting that after a period of time, in fact, Joseph, when he went to Egypt, was 17 years old. He now was 30 years old. For 13 years, he languished. For 13 years, he was in a storm. For 13 years, he had difficult times. And of course, the story goes that Pharaoh had a dream and he could not interpret it. None of his magicians or counselors could interpret it. They didn't know what it meant. And in that moment, that man remembered Joseph, that Joseph had interpreted his dream. He said, I know of a man, and the Spirit of God is on him. And so Pharaoh called for Joseph, and he uh, went before Pharaoh. And, of course, Joseph told him, he said, the dream that you had is this, that there is coming a famine. There is coming a time of great trouble. And what you need to do is appoint someone to store up food for the bad times, to store up uh, help for when there is no harvest. And, And so we know, of course, the story goes that Pharaoh said, who can we find other than this man that has the Spirit of God in him? And Joseph suddenly went from being in prison to be exalted to the second most powerful person in the world. Egypt was the dynasty of that time. It was the most powerful nation on the face of the planet at that time. And Joseph, it tells us that he suddenly, and I use the word suddenly, after 13 years of trials, after 13 years of being tempted, after 13 years of being tried, he suddenly was put in a position to save the world. And that is no exaggeration to say that God put him there to save the world. Now, Joseph, like most of us, probably was interested in saving his own skin. He was interested in saving his own reputation. He was interested in saving his own family. But God had a bigger plan for him God was interested that he save the world. 
And literally, he did. Joseph, we find, is actually a picture, a type of Christ in the Old Testament. He was falsely accused. He uh, suffered for wrongs he did not do. And he gave himself to literally save the world. I find it very interesting what Joseph said to Pharaoh after Pharaoh had brought him out of prison and told him, you need to interpret this dream for me. The interesting thing was that Joseph didn't sit there and say, you need to let me out of prison. I have been wronged. I need justice. Where is the lawyer where I can sue somebody? That's not what he did. Uh, Pharaoh had said, hey, we hear that you are an interpreter of dreams. And I want you to notice what Joseph said. He said, it's not me, but God. It's not me, but God. And in the middle of this opportunity, he maybe had to get back at someone. In the middle of this opportunity, he acknowledged that it was not him. It was not his ability. It wasn't his manipulation, but it was God. And that, I believe, tells us a lot about who Joseph was. Well, the story goes that uh, Joseph was exalted. He became the equivalent of the prime minister of Egypt. And then the, the famine came. And people in all that part of the world began to come to Egypt so they could get food to live. And we pick up the story here in uh, Genesis chapter 45. This is the story where Joseph's brothers, who were the ones that betrayed him, the ones who sold him into slavery, they were there in front of him. And I'm sure Joseph remembered those dreams. There's coming a day that those sheaves will bow down. There's coming a day that the moon and the stars will bow down. But I want you to notice how he behaved. And this tells us a lot about who he was. Genesis 45 verse 1. Joseph could stand it no longer. His brothers had been brought into him. And there were many people in the room. And he said to his attendants, out, all of you. So he was alone with his brothers, and when he told them who he was, and then he broke down and wept. He wept so loudly the Egyptians could hear him, and the word of it quickly carried to Pharaoh's palace. I'm Joseph, he said to his brothers. Is my father still alive? But his brothers were speechless. I can imagine I would be too, you know? And they were stunned to realize that Joseph was standing in front of them. Please come closer, he said to them. So they came closer and he said again, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into slavery in Egypt. Can you imagine that moment? That had to be one of the most incredible moments of his life. But don't be upset. And don't be angry with yourselves for selling me to this place. It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. What perspective. What an attitude to have about, yes, he had storms. And yes, he had troubles. And yes, he had trials. Did he become bitter? Was he gloating at this moment? Was he... Convinced that finally his moment for revenge had come? No. He said, God did this. God did this. He did this to save many people's lives. This famine that has ravaged the land for two years will last for five more. And there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. And God has sent me ahead of you to keep you and your family's alive, and to preserve many survivors. And by the way, let me just insert this here. One of the reasons that Joseph was able to have this perspective is he remembered the promise, which I'm sure had been passed down generation to generation. He remembered the promise that God gave to Abraham, his grandfather. 
What was that promise? That through his seed, through his offspring, would come a savior of the world. Someone that would be a blessing to all of humanity that would turn to God. Incredible. By the way, if you want to be able to have the kind of attitude that Joseph had, if you want to be able to have the kind of spirit that he had where you don't seek revenge, but rather you give glory to God and you don't get bitter, then keep in mind what Joseph kept in mind. The promises of God. The gospel. He wouldn't have said it that way. He probably didn't even know what that word meant. Probably never used that word before, but that's what God had promised to Abraham that through his seed there would come a forever king that would sit on a forever throne, and that, of course, was Jesus Christ. You want to keep perspective? Then keep in mind God's purpose, God's plan, and the gospel. Well, and he is the one who made me an advisor to Pharaoh. It's interesting that in some translation, that word advisor is translated father. He has made me a father to Pharaoh. Now, perhaps Pharaoh at that time may have been possibly younger than Joseph, but he wasn't that much younger. Maybe he was older than Joseph. We're not really sure. But it's interesting that he chose that word. God has made me a father to Pharaoh. What does that mean? Well, we know that fathers guide. Fathers direct. Fathers protect. Fathers have been put into the lives of their children and their families for a great purpose. Joseph recognized that. He recognized that God did not exalt him to this position for his personal gain. Oh, he became very wealthy. He became very powerful. But that was not what Joseph was focused on. He was focused on the fact that God had put them at that moment in time to be able to influence people with what we would call the gospel. And maybe, maybe, you're going through difficulty in your life so that God can make a father out of you. Oh, I'm not talking about, um, for you ladies, I'm not saying that you're going to be a man. That's not what I'm suggesting. But a father, a father figure, one that is influential, God certainly did that for Joseph. He'll do that for you. He will give you influence. He will give you an opportunity to affect the next generation. And I want you to think about that. The truth of the matter is this. We all need to be affecting and influencing the next generation. How do you do that? You do that as a parent, obviously. You influence the next generation as a parent Make sure that if you've got young kids, have them in church. As the old saying goes, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And I realize that you can take your kids to church, but you can't make them love Jesus. But let me tell you something. The more you get them in church, the more you model Christianity in front of them, the greater shot you've got at your kids loving the Lord. Do not make the mistake that some parents in our modern generation make. Well, I'm going to let them decide on their own. I'm not going to force this down their throat. What other areas of life do you not do that? You don't say, well, look, I'm going to let them choose between eating cake or cookies and their vegetables. After all, I want them to want to eat their vegetables. I'm not going to force it down their throat. Oh, yes, you do. I mean, in some cases, literally, okay, you're going to sit there and you're going to eat and you're not going to get up until you finish your plate, young lady. You ever done that? Okay. Look, the fact is God has put you in the life of your children to influence them. The Bible says that 
In Psalm 127, children are a gift from the Lord. As arrows in the hands of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. You know what that metaphor tells us? Our job as parents is to influence our kids by pointing them at the target. What's the target? Play for the Atlanta Braves? Wait, if they get to do that, that's awesome. And I hope that they will be a member of this church and tithe when they make their millions, okay? What, what is the target? We're going to get our kids an education. Education's important. But is that the target? I want my kid to build a business, to be successful. I want them to own their own home. And that's great. I hope every one of your kids can do that. But is that really the target? You see, here's the target, according to Scripture. It is a relationship with God. A relationship with Jesus Christ. Because in Psalm 127, uh, earlier in that psalm, he says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. You see, you can climb to the very top of the ladder of success and find out that All along, it's been leaning against the wrong wall. And you can waste your talent and your opportunities. And yes, even your life. What has God done in your life? Well, as a parent, he's put you in that position to influence your kids. By the way, as an adult, as a part of this church, you know what God has called us to do? To reach the next generation for Christ. And if you're going to reach the next generation for Christ, you know what you got to do? you got to have a, a spirit that is willing to go the extra mile. You know what I've learned? That when I am ministering to others and I'm trying to reach others, it's not all about me. If we played the kind of music that I liked all the time, a lot of you would not come here. You see, I am a huge, huge fan of 80s heavy metal music, okay? I know I probably don't look like that, okay? But Def Leppard is my jam, is all I'm saying. Now, now, let me say this. Um, It's not about me. And, And maybe you're the type, maybe you like really traditional music. Well, you probably don't like our church. Or, or maybe you say, we need to do more 80s rock. Well, let me tell you. It's not about you. It's not about me. What we have been called to do is to be a father to the next generation. We have been called to influence the next generation. What do you do? Well, as a parent, you influence your kids. Bring them to church. Don't send them to church. Bring them. Don't give them the option of laying out. Bring them with you. You say, well, I don't want to force it down their throat. Yeah, I've already illustrated that's not true. All right. The fact is, uh, you can't force them. I get it, but you know what I've seen time after time after time after time? Parents who bring their kids to church and do it regularly and faithfully, eventually, do, they, do their kids always stay in church? No, they don't, but they never forget. And God uses that. You can be a father to the next generation by serving here in this church. Did you know that in order for this church to function, we got to have people serving. We need people serving in children's ministry. Thank God for our children's ministry. It's going on right now downstairs. Because if they were in here, you wouldn't be listening to me, I can tell you that. Would you stop it, you know? The fact is you can influence the next generation. You can be a father to the next generation by giving. By being faithful, by inviting. Why is that? Because God has called us to be influencers. And I'm not talking about an Instagram influencer where you get so many followers or that kind of thing. I don't even understand all that, to be honest with you. And I think that it is really silly personally. But if they make a lot of money, more power to them. All right. So uh, I've read about uh, this, uh, this morning, actually, I read about some college athletes that make up the $4 million a year in NIL money and 
uh, having followers. Some of them have millions of followers, and they get lots and lots and lots of money. More power to them. I hope they, once again, make a lot of money. Uh, but once again, our job is to be just like Joseph was, an influencer. Someone who influences people that need Jesus. Now, uh, it says, and he is the one who made me a father to Pharaoh, the manager of his entire palace, and the governor of all Egypt. Well, I want to give you a few thoughts, okay? I actually have nine points. Now, before you groan, they're not long, all right? I'm going to give you just nine principles. Now, normally I give three, but I think this helps us to know how God uses storms in our life to help other people. And I want you to see nine leadership lessons from the life of Joseph that each of us needs to follow. Number one, your integrity is more important than your present problems. Did you notice that in the life of Joseph, he was falsely accused, but he kept his integrity? Now, he could have bemoaned his problems, and I'm sure he didn't like them, but his integrity was more important than his present circumstances. And you and I need to learn that, that our integrity should not be for sale, no matter what, no matter who says what about us. Number two, you got to learn to deal with temptation ahead of time. Now, if you remember the story, remember when uh, Joseph went in and Potiphar's wife, Potiphar, she came in, you know, by the way, I just made that name up. That's not a real name, all right? Um, she came in trying to get him to sleep with her, and he fled. Why was he able to do that? Because he had dealt with temptation ahead of time. He had decided that what he was going to do, whenever he was tempted, here's how he was going to act. And by the way, whether it is in, as in Joseph's case, a sexual situation, whether it's about honesty, lying and truth-telling, whether it's about dealing with your finances, no matter what it is, listen, you got to deal with temptation ahead of time. And the heat of the moment is not the time to try to make up your mind. Because when you're in the middle of temptation and you've not dealt with it earlier, you're going to give in most likely. Deal with it ahead of time. Number three, never give up on the dream. I love how Joseph, it seems, that he never stopped believing that God was going to use him. Now, he had great promise as a 17-year-old boy. He had great promise that God was going to use him. But then he got sold into slavery, and then he was falsely accused, and then he was put into prison of all things. I mean, once again, slavery and then prison? The point is this. When you get a dream from God, when God gives you a direction, when God tells you to do something, do not give up. Why? Because God's got a plan. You may not see it for 13 years like Joseph, but God nevertheless had a plan in his life. Number four, you need to recognize that God is with you even in the difficult times. When Joseph was cast into prison, the Bible says the Lord was with him and his favor was on him. That seems like a rather odd time to say that God's given you favor. I mean, I can think of better circumstances. God, you want to give me favor? How about giving me a fat stack of money? All right, that, that, would, be, that would be my idea, right? God, you want to give me favor? Give me health. Give me long life. Give me a promotion at work. Give me success in my business. I mean, I can think of a lot of things that I would think that if God was wanting to show me favor, he could do. But understand this. The favor of God is not dependent upon your circumstances. Maybe your circumstances are difficult right now, but understand that God is with you even then. Number five, allow God to lead you and accept his will enthusiastically. You know what we never see in the life of Joseph? 
that he complained. We never see that he began to doubt God's will for his life. Now, this is a test of your maturity and your spirituality. Can you say, I am in the will of God, I am doing what God's called me to do, even when it seems like you're not succeeding? That's difficult. But Joseph learned that he was going to allow, allow God to lead him and accept the will of God for his life with enthusiasm. Yes, this is what God has called me to do. I'm going to do it. I wish I could tell you that as a pastor. And next month will be 23 years that we started this church. I wish I could tell you that every week and every Sunday and every Monday, I was all enthusiastic. But the ongoing joke with pastors is, pastors never feel like quitting except for every Monday morning. <laughs> now, what am I saying? I'm saying that sometimes when you're in the will of God, it's not always easy circumstances. But it's always God's will. And He'll always be with you. And He will always give you His favor. Number six, and this is a big one. Practice forgiveness and then practice it some more. Now, I'm going to just let you inside the mind and the heart of a pastor, okay? If I was in Joseph's position, I would have been like, boom, there we go. It's time for you guys to go to prison yourself. You know what I mean? But that's just me, okay? Maybe, maybe you would be that way. But you know what I find incredible about Joseph? In spite of the fact, now once again, it wasn't like they borrowed his car and got a dent in it, okay? That, that level of forgiveness, yeah, you, you got to practice forgiveness. We're talking about they kidnapped him. They sold, they were planning on killing him. They sold him into slavery for 13 years he suffered. Can you imagine the potential for bitterness? The potential for revenge? I mean, it's not every day that you get made the most powerful man in the world to be able to exact revenge on the people that have hurt you. Hello. He forgave. And by the way, God's called you and me to forgive even when it doesn't go our way. Even when people hurt us. And can I tell you, somebody's going to hurt you. That's just inevitable. If you think you can go through all of life without ever being hurt or without ever being harmed, well, you're kind of naive. But what does God want us to do? Does he want us to get our revenge? Does he want us to be... Uh, like Alexander Dumas, the Count of Monte Cristo, and we're going to plot our revenge, and we're going to get revenge on our enemies, the people that have hurt us? No. God says, learn to forgive. Man, that's big. And then, number seven, believe that God has a plan, even when you don't recognize it. And this is where faith is required. Because when God has given you a vision, when God has spoken to you about something you should do, am I suggesting that you should never change tactics? No. I'm just simply saying is that when God has a plan, sometimes you don't recognize it at the time. And then later, I, I could tell so many stories about this. Uh, before we started this church in 2001, I had been a pastor of a church, I'd resigned and I'd gone into evangelism. I literally spoke in countries all over the world and churches all over the United States of America and I, I had a great opportunity. And I felt like what I was supposed to do was move my family from Georgia to Texas. I don't know why, that's just what I felt like I was supposed to be doing. And um, I'd prayed about it. I'm like, yes, this is the will of God for my life. And so I put my house up for sale. Keep in mind that in Georgia at that time, 
The moment you put your house up for sale, what literally normally within days, you are under contract. And I put our house up for sale, very attractive offer, good location, beautiful home. And I had it up for probably two or three months. And you know how many not offers, not people that came by to look at it. Do you know how many people that even contacted me, asked about the house, or tried to come by and look at it in that three months? Zero. Not one. I was like, good night. What in the world? God, is your favor no longer on me? Well, it turns out that not long after that, God led me to start this church. And because God can see further down the road than I can, because God knows more than I know, you know what happened? God protected me. He had a plan. I didn't recognize it at the time, but believe that God has a plan even when you don't recognize it. Then number eight, don't wait for perfect conditions to use your influence. I love that Joseph used his influence when he was enslaved and when he was imprisoned. He didn't say, you know, once I get out of this and once I get some money coming in and once I get my freedom, I'm going to, I'm going to be an influence for you, oh God. No, we need to learn to use our influence wherever we are. And then finally, do what is right today. To avoid bitterness. I love the fact that Joseph didn't get bitter. Why? Well, if you study the story, you know that Joseph, in every circumstance, you know what he did? To the best of his ability, he tried to do what was right. He tried to follow what God had called him to do. Wasn't always easy. Some people misunderstood it. But he did what was right. And I really do believe that as a result of that, he never got bitter. He never got angry. He was never filled with a spirit of revenge. And may God teach us how to deal with our bitter circumstances. And if we will allow God to use us and to speak to us and to be with us, He'll use us and the storms in our life to help other people. Heavenly Father, help us to be used by you. Help us to follow you. Help us to be obedient to you. And Lord, we want you to know that we love you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, let me encourage you today, if you are watching online, if you're in the room, and you would like to pray to receive Jesus Christ, We'll have someone here at the front that will pray with you. I'm going to be in the back, actually, after the service. If you'd like to talk with someone about that, I'll be back there. Um, I want to encourage you, if you're new or if you've never been to the Next Step class, and I'm going to put you on the spot. How many of you have never been to the Next Step class? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay, several of you. Okay, here's what I want you to do. Okay, before you leave, after the service, I'm going back to that room, and I got a brochure I want to give you, okay? It's free. You don't have to do anything for it, and I want to just speak to you. And so if you will, go there, and I'll talk to you for just a few minutes, okay? So please do that. If you've not been through that class, see me afterwards, and I'll give you this brochure that will help you and help you understand what it means uh, to be a member and what the opportunities are. So right after we pray, uh, we're going to uh, go into the back, okay? Ushers, would you come? Let's give our offering at this time. Once again, 95% of our offerings come in digitally. About 5% comes in in the buckets. Uh, sometimes I say offering plate, but it's bucket. Uh, these aren't plates. I, you know, I like the idea of eating out of this and calling it a plate. If I want a a uh, plate of barbecue, then I, I'll use that. That's a big old giant bucket, okay? But uh, you can use this to give, and uh, the other ways you can give, online at stillwaters.online, 
text the number 84321, or you can use the Church Center app. And that is a wonderful way to be able to give and to be a part of what's going on here, okay? Okay, don't forget, Wednesday night, 5 o'clock, we're going to meet down at Somerset. If you don't know where that is, see someone in the back, sign up for it. It's just literally a half a mile from here. And on Friday, maybe you can't come Wednesday, but you can come Friday. We're going to give out the free barbecue and uh, invite people to come to church. So hope you'll be a part of that. And uh, once again, if you've not been, please, I'm not going to, I'm not going to steal your bank account, okay? I'm not, going to, I'm not going to make you sign anything in blood. I want to give you a brochure, all right, so that you can understand what it means to be a part of our church. Just because you get the brochure doesn't mean that you have to join the church, okay? But please, stop by and let me give you that, okay? All right, let's everyone stand. Thank you for being here with us today. God bless you. I love you. Uh, for those of you that haven't gotten the brochure, stop by and see me and I'll give it to you. And uh, then others, I'll see you later. God bless you. Have a good week.